angler is another name for a person who fishes. So you might also hear fisherman or fisherwoman or just like somebody who fishes. But angler is the technical term. So here's the, the warning. The next few turns might be confusing because they all work together to do the job. You may want to rewatch this part. And some of them have a couple different names. So if you look at that picture, shout out to anyone watching or listening on the podcast, you can't see that picture. And I'm sorry. But there is a long rod or a long pole in the picture. And that is what we call it. Rod. Fishing rod. A fishing pole. So a fishing rod is a long stick with a line and hook that people use to catch fish in the water. So in that definition, I have a couple things. I will be talking about in a minute, like hook and line. A rod is another name for a fishing pole. You will hear both terms. You might fish with a pole, you might fish with a rod. The next one, I can make this a little bigger, but this is a reel. It's a circle kind of thing. A fishing reel is a round thing that you turn to bring the fishing line in or let it out when you're trying to catch fish. And again, for that one, there are a couple terms we'll talk about in a minute. Line. I've mentioned it once before. And it is very hard to see because it is so thin. It's like a string, only it's a little stronger than a string. You won't hear that very often, a fishing string. I don't think you'll ever hear it, but you will hear fishing line. So let me make that a little bigger. See where that arrow is pointing to. The thing on that line is a hook, which we will talk about in just a minute. But line. A fishing line is a long, thin string that you put in the water when you're fishing. You can use it to catch fish. So you might hear the term, I'm going to drop a line in the water. Anybody who says that? is going to be fishing. They are going to try to catch fish. All right, before we go any further, I'm wondering, please let me know in the chat, do you fish? Do you ever go fishing? Because to be honest, I don't fish very often. All of the research I did for this lesson came from the internet. It did not come from experience. I've been fishing maybe three, four times in my life. Not very often. Adi the tie. Thank you so much. After this live stream, I'll study how to join you in the live. Thank you so much. My respect and lovely teacher. Yeah, thank you so much. Also, if you are a channel member, you have access to the Discord, and I know Audie knows this, and I did leave him a link to find the live chat, but I guess it didn't work. There were some problems with Android phones, so that were not problems before. I'll have to figure that out. There you go. We have at least one fisherman in the chat. Very nice. Follow, never, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, sure, Abdi. The difference between an angler and angling, the angler is the person, 
it's a noun. And then if you are angling, it's just a very fancy way to say fishing. Yeah, good question. My mood is back. All right, my hill fished in their childhood. Not so much anymore. Hello to anyone watching on Facebook and YouTube. Oh, we will talk about that. So Dinar, I said your name correctly. Uh, Brent, I think real has another meaning or can we use it as a verb? Yeah, we are going to talk about the phrasal verb to reel in. Yeah. Hang on to that thought for a second. Filippo has been a channel member for six months. I think it's longer than that. But I got a little something for you. And for Audi, watch your ears. This might be loud. New member. Make sure you check the members tab for the Discord, the members chat, and the bonus videos. And Audi, thank you so much for that super chat. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. And just to let you know, all the money from memberships and super chats go right back into the channel. Next month, I will be flying to Kentucky and I will be filming lessons there in a brand new state. So thank you so much for that. All right, another vote for fishing. Omron, who lives in Dubai. Yeah, Brent, love to go fishing. And I used to go fishing with my father in Syria almost every month. It has been a blast and I miss this time. And I know that uh, Mahmoud, who left a two months, I think Mahmoud has been a member longer than two months. But um, Mahmoud was talking about how there's no water where he lives. He lives in the desert. So it's definitely impossible for him to go fishing. So I was curious. Uh, oh, he actually says it right there. I've never been fishing in my life, but I would love to one day. So yeah, I didn't think this lesson would be too popular, but for the people who fish, you will now have a better understanding of how to talk about fishing in English. All right, Constantine. I think he is a fisherman. Chris, what is going on? Exactly. Bahar. Um, when you reel in a fish, you, you take it out of the water, you, you grab it from the water. You could, uh, reel out the line or you could reel in the line and, and hopefully you have a fish when you reel it in new words with MP. Thank you so much. Left a super chat in the members chat as well. So thank you so much. I do have a little something for you. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. And every time that happens, I take a little sip of water. All right, so it looks like we have some people who do fish. Oh, thank you so much. Watching for about six months. I appreciate that. Look at that, Armenia. Armenia's in the house. Love it. What is the capital of Armenia? It's Yerevan, isn't it? Yerevan. So welcome. Welcome, Yana. Miguel, could you explain the phrasal verbs? Maybe we should get back to the lesson because I do have this. We wouldn't say reel off. We wouldn't say that. We would say reel in. And I just remembered I did not put the word cast. Maybe I should do a short lesson about cast because it has a number of different meanings. But when we talk about cast for fishing, you can cast out your line. And that means to throw the hook or the bait, which we still need to talk about. You throw that really far into the water. You cast out your line. Oh, absolutely. Zig, lots of country music, talks about fishing, maybe with their pickup truck. 
maybe with their girlfriend. All right. Russia is in the house. Welcome, welcome. Lucin, Guatemala. Thank you so much for being a channel member. All right, let's go. You are here to learn English, right? Not here to listen to me talk to people in the chat. It's fun though. The next one we need to talk about is hook. A fishing hook is a small sharp tool used for catching fish. It has a pointy end to catch the fish when they bite the bait. I still need to talk about bait, which is why maybe you want to rewatch this lesson. Here's a sentence with hook. He put a fishing hook on his line to catch some fish in the river. I need to do a whole lesson on types of water. River is one of them. Fresh water. We will talk about fresh water in a minute. Okay. This next one is tough. This is one reason English is so hard. I am going to talk about the word sink. We have a couple different ways to use sink. This one you probably know, right? Sink, like the one in the picture. It's a noun. It's a thing. A sink is a big, usually square, a rectangular bowl in your kitchen or bathroom where you wash dishes or your hands. Make it a little bigger so you can see me. No, so you can see the sink. So you don't have to look at my face. That's a sink. I think most people know that. But we also have a verb in English called sink. So let's talk about that. Now I tried to make this as clear as possible. Sink. In the picture, I have a rock in water, and that rock is going down to the bottom of the water. And in English, we call that sink. The opposite is float. So to sink means to go down or fall to the bottom of water, like when things get heavy and go under the surface. It is the opposite of float. So that's important because the next fishing term I'm going to talk about is called a sinker. And a sinker is probably going to be made of metal and it is going to make your hook go down below the water. So a sinker is a small heavy weight that is attached to the fishing line to make the bait or lure sink down in the water. I'll say it again. Maybe you should watch this again because we need to talk about bait and lure. All of these are connected. But we talked about hook. We talked about line. And we talked about sinker. So the next thing I would like to teach you, there's another picture of a sinker. The next thing I would like to teach you is the saying we have in English is like, they fell for it hook, line, and sinker. You might hear that. Yes, they're all fishing terms, but this phrase doesn't have anything to do with fishing. So we might call it an idiom. This is what it means. The phrase hook, line, and sinker is used when someone believes something totally. There is no doubt. It's like saying they were completely fooled or tricked. So in that picture, I have a picture of a man, a woman. She looks like she is holding a bouquet of flowers. 
that might be a French term that English stole a bouquet of flowers. And it looks like she wants to hit them, him with those flowers for some reason. So maybe how about this, maybe her boyfriend is not a nice person, but she fell for him hook, line, and sinker. You'll often hear that verb. They fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. So maybe he was cheating on her the whole time. Maybe he wasn't being honest with her. She fell in love with him, and then she found out he was a jerk. But at one time, she fell for him. Hook, line, and sinker. All right, the next one that I want to talk about to help you understand hook, line, and sinker is this term, a magician. And if you look at the picture, I'm sure you have magicians in your language. They practice something we like to call magic in English. So they fool people. They do tricks, maybe pulling a rabbit out of a hat. I don't even know if you can do that anymore. It's kind of mean for the rabbit. Or maybe saw a lady in half. Again, kind of cruel. Magicians seem like they're kind of mean, pulling rabbits and cutting ladies. But a lot of children will fall for their tricks, hook, line, and sinker. They totally, totally believe that the magician is doing something real. And of course, he's not really sawing the woman in half. But little kids are often fooled by magicians' tricks. Sometimes they fall for them hook, line, and sinker. Here's an example sentence. She believed the magician's trick was real. Hook, line, and sinker. She had no doubts. So probably some little girl crying after she sees a nice woman cut right in half. All right, back to fishing. So these are all fishing terms for the next couple ones. Lure, lure. We also have that verb in English. It might not have anything to do with fishing, but lure means to attract or try to bring somebody closer to you or bring something closer to you. But in fishing, they look like that. Lures, you try to attract fish. You try to catch fish with lures. A fishing lure is like a colorful toy that you put on a fishing line to trick fish into biting. So they see the shiny object, they go closer to it, they try to bite it, and guess what? There is now a hook in their mouth and they become your dinner, maybe. All right, quite a few comments in the chat. I would like to make sure I haven't missed anything important. Eric, new channel member. Welcome to the club. I have a little something for you. New member, make sure you check the members tab for the discord, the members chat and the bonus videos. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Welcome again. If you are a silver member, there is a discord for this channel. There are daily chats. People are leaving messages or pictures in there. Gold members, when we have members chats happen once, twice, sometimes four times a month you can come on camera. So thank you. There is a link in the chat if you would like to become a member. Eliminate Brad, hope you're doing well. Hey, Mega's here. Did not see Mega, but I saw Constantine saying hello. So know that, welcome. What is this, Bob the Canadian? Oh man, thanks so much, Bob the Canadian. I think he just did a mystery lesson on sleep, but I appreciate the shout out. Bob the Canadian is very generous. Thank you so much. 
Lots of people saying Bob. Hello. Bob is a legend. Yeah. Let's talk more about fishing here. I wonder if Bob the Canadian, hmm, he does have a river or a stream by his house, but I haven't talked to him about fishing. Hmm. He seems like he might fish, maybe. I don't fish that much because I don't like to bait the hook. I'm going to talk about bait really soon. I think the next one. But the colorful fishing lure was so shiny that it attracted the fish's attention. Fish's attention. One fish, two fish. But right there, the fish has possession of its attention. So that is a correct sentence. sentence. Fishes. Apostrophe S. All right, the next one. This is the main reason why I don't fish is because you have to bait the hook. And oftentimes you use what we call live bait. And that live bait is often a worm. Just in case you didn't know what a worm was in English, there's a picture of a worm. I might describe that worm as slimy, slippery. When you pick up the worm, it might slip from your fingers. Yeah. The one main reason I don't fish. And also, I don't like to eat fish. I don't like the taste most of the time. But from the chat, it looks like quite a few people do fish in here. Here's a sentence for you with bait and worm. He put a tasty worm on the hook as bait to catch the fish. So just like lure, you try to bring the fish to your hook. You can do it with lure, a lure, usually something shiny. So the fish will look at it or something tasty like a worm. So the fish bite your worm and then you bite the fish probably after you cook it, unless you have it with sushi. I don't know. Hope that helps. So here is a sentence, or sorry, here is a verb we use, which is catch. You catch a fish, but I also have a phrasal verb for you. And it's been mentioned in the chat. Let's reel in. But I do think I have a sentence about catch because it can be a difficult word. You can catch a fish, which means you might get it on your hook, bring it home, and it's your dinner. But you can also catch a ball. It's like to receive it. You can also catch a cold. Where I live, starting to get a little colder, and people often get sick with maybe colds or flus. I have a whole English lesson on how to talk about colds. Did it a couple years ago. But you can catch a cold, which means you start to get sick. You might have a runny nose, maybe a sore throat. So catch is a weird verb. But almost always, when you hear this phrasal verb, real in, you're talking about fishing in English. Reel in is another way to say catch in English. She reeled in a big fish. You remember reel from before? It's that little circular thing we talked about. Let's check the chat. Freddy Wolf is here. I don't remember if I've said hello to Freddy Wolf. Tanya, I could not agree more. Worms are disgusting. I mean, I know that worms do a great job. I think they make the soil or the dirt really good to grow crops. I don't know if Bob the Canadian is still here, but I'm sure he loves worms because he and his wife grow flowers. 
worms do a great job, but I prefer them to stay under the ground. I don't like to look at them. They do a great job. Keep it up, worms. Just, yeah, just don't, don't. Oh, sometimes in the spring when we get a lot of rain, at least where I live, a lot of the worms will be on the ground, not in the ground. They will be on the ground and it's hard not to step on them. So sinker. So I didn't want to have too many terms for this lesson, but since it's mentioned in the chat, let me get a picture of a bobber because they are the opposite. Sinkers and bobbers, not like Bob the Canadian, by the way, but a bobber, it usually has, and I'm sure wherever you live, it has the same thing, um, the same colors. But this is a bobber. Okay. And it does the opposite of a sinker. It keeps your line on the surface of the water so you can see it. And if the bobber ever goes down, you know you might have a fish on your line or maybe just a piece of trash on the bottom of the water, like maybe a shoe. But that is what a bobber looks like. It's round, white, and red, that's a bobber. Good question. Well, well, tasty worm, not tasty to us, but tasty to the fish you're trying to catch. I don't think fish are tasty. I believe so. Mode, welcome. I heard that fish love to eat earthworms. So when I hear that term earthworm, I think of a really big worm. So if you hear earthworm, it's probably larger than normal. Yeah. Ugh. One reason why I don't fish, right? Lipo. Thank you. Also wizards? Jeez, I'm not sure what that means. No, I don't think wizards have anything to do with fishing. When I think of wizards, I think of magic, but wizards and magicians in English are different. Magicians are real people and wizards would be more like in the book, Harry Potter, if you've heard of that. So in English, Harry Potter is a wizard. I'm not sure what you call it in Italian. Maybe I should, but Okay, I've missed a couple things. So Tanya, Filippo, thank you so much for the super chat. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Stole a little sip of water there. Thank you so much. I think there was something else I missed here too. Mina has been with the channel for a long time. Thank you so much, Amina. She lives in Ottawa, Canada, beautiful city. Never visited, but I plan to. And Rulina, thank you so much. You have become a new channel member. I have a little something for you. New member, make sure you check the members tab for the discord, the members chat and the bonus videos. Yeah, thank you so much for becoming a member. If you're just joining us and you're not sure about what a membership is, there is a link in the chat that explains it, but you get a bonus video every week. Sometimes it's a member's chat. Sometimes it's just a little extra information. And then we also have monthly members chats, gold members can come on camera and say hello, and also a Discord for silver and gold members. Thank you. Welcome to the club. I hope you like it. I think you will. 
All right, we should. All right, Mahmood, did you meet Amina once in Canada? I did not. I met Bob the Canadian, and that's about it. I left um, really late. I did look to see how far Ottawa was away, and it was about four hours out of my way. So it would have taken me an extra four hours to get home, and I was really tired. We worked really hard, so I said, next time. But I also have a, a couple other friends that live in Ottawa. If you saw the lesson on Canada Day, Shauna was on camera and I interviewed her. She lives in Ottawa. So they're good. I have some really good friends in Ottawa. So maybe I will go with my brother up there one day because we're all, we're all good friends. And again, his wife is from Canada. Catch and release. Yes. Maybe I missed something in the chat, but if you are fishing, but you just like to fish and you don't want to eat any of the fish, you're just going to put them back in the water or you're just going to throw the fish back in the water. We call it catch and release, Re catch and release and mode. I have not talked about that. It's not part of the lesson. So I'm glad that you mentioned it. Mina, it will happen. Trust me. I promise. All right. Back to the lesson. We have quite a bit more to talk about. The next one, we were talking about real in. But I do want to talk about this. Tackle box. These are a little easier because they're not connected to the fishing pole, but a tackle box, if you can see that picture, it probably explains everything. A tackle box is a container used to store or keep and organize fishing equipment, such as hooks, lures, and fishing line. So we've talked about all three of those things already. Hooks, lures, and fishing line. I'm sure if you are a fisherman or a fisherwoman or an angler, you have a tackle box. It just helps keep all of the things you need organized. Not too bad. Now, this isn't too bad either, I don't think. Because we are going to talk about fresh water and salt water kind of at the same time. So you can go fishing in fresh water. Fresh water is simply water without salt. It's like lakes, ponds, excuse me, rivers and streams. And I plan to do another English lesson on types of water. I did one when I first started the channel talking about all those types of water, but I'm going to update that lesson. Fresh water. Now, most of the water on our planet is seawater. So that would be pretty much water in the ocean or the sea. So fresh water and salt water, two different types of water. You can drink fresh water most of the time, right? Most of the time, you won't get sick most of the time. Salt water, you can drink it, but it's probably just going to make you more thirsty. So you might not want to drink too much of it. It could make you sick. Let's talk about a couple different types of fish. Trout. In English, we call that type of fish a trout. And trout is one, <coughs> excuse me, typo. Let me fix that. One type. There we go. 
trout is one type of fish that is mostly fresh water. Trout is a fresh water fish. And I say mostly because sometimes it happens where you will find trout in the sea or the ocean, but that's not where they like to live. They are a fresh water fish. Now this one is comfortable in both fresh water and salt water. And this is what a salmon might look like on the plate. And it's a very unique looking fish. A lot of times fish will be white when it's on the plate. I will have a picture of that in just a minute, but salmon is more red or more pink and salmon can be a freshwater fish or it can be a salt water fish. We got the rare silent L in that word. It is pronounced salmon, salmon. Am I getting a lot of text messages? No, not my phone. I don't have very many friends. So when I get a text message, when my phone vibrates, it's usually something important. No, nobody was texting me like usual. I hear something though. Anyways, um, salmon. If you go to the southern part of the United States, you actually might hear this fish called salmon. So there are two ways to pronounce this fish in the United States, but the most common way is salmon. Silent L. I don't know why. Silent L. All right, just checking the chat. Trout. I think he's, I think he might ask yeah, a good question because he says about maybe like a boat. He doesn't say it that with that thick of a Canadian accent, a boot. No, he probably says trout very similarly to the way I do. Oh goodness is, I do not know this term. Constantine is noodling considered as fishing. I'm sorry. I don't know. Don't know. Costa Rica is in the house. Welcome. Welcome. Really? You make salmon? Interesting, Omron. I will be visiting Omron next June. Maybe we can sit down and have some salmon together. I'm not a fish guy, to be honest. I do not like the taste of fish, but maybe we can share uh, some salmon one day. All right, just checking through, oh, okay. Road? Rad, rad. Hello, Brent, how about catfish? To be honest, catfish is actually one of the types of fish that I like. So when I lived in the Southern part of the United States, I used to live in Alabama, that is a Southern state, and catfish is very popular down there. Where I live in Maine, it's not so popular. The types of fish that are popular here, in English, we say cod, we say haddock, we say salmon. Those are probably the three most common types of fish, not seafood. But fish, seafood is fish you can find in salt water, but also things like clams and lobsters, if you know those in English. In the southern part of the United States, catfish is very popular. Catfish even have whiskers. Whiskers are what cats have near their mouth, like long strings. And catfish, believe it or not, it actually doesn't taste that fishy. Yeah, you will hear that adjective in English. If fish have a strong taste, you will hear it described as fishy. Ooh, I can't eat that fish. It's, it's too fishy. Catfish 
is more bland. It almost tastes like chicken a little bit, but I've only had it fried and uh, it's, it's really good to be honest. Catfish, not a fish guy, but I do like catfish. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. I hope I don't get in trouble with YouTube, but um, for saying shooting. But if, if you hear that, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. That means it's very easy. All right. Tanya. Sita, she, I believe she is a moderator. So don't make Sita mad. All right. Thank you. I'm glad the interesting, the video was interesting. We're not quite done. All right. Mr. Azaz. Salmon is actually my favorite. Interesting. Maybe I'm missing out. Maybe I need to have salmon again. It's probably, probably been 30 years since I've tried salmon. I will try again when I go to Dubai next summer. It's possible, Sita. Maybe I haven't had the right fish, right? Brazil, where I will be next April. It's right near the ocean. I think Rio has some good fish. I need to, I need to try that. Yeah, if you're just joining, um, Erdogan, Erdogan? I, uh, I don't go fishing in Maine. No, all of my research was done on the internet. Yeah, a lot of people like seafood. I like I like a little bit of seafood, and I live so close to the ocean, but I'm not really a seafood guy. Oh, noodling is fishing for catfish using bare hands or feet, and is practiced primarily in the southern United States. The noodler places their hands or foot inside. A discovered catfish hole. Okay. I have seen that. I did not know what that was called. I've seen it on television. I have actually gone uh, fishing for catfish. A buddy of mine had a fishing hole. You might hear that. A fishing hole might be a secret place to go fishing. So my buddy knew of a fishing hole where there were catfish. And for bait, we used hot dogs. We put hot dogs on the hook and the catfish bit the hook. So we captured them. And when we ran out of hot dogs, we just used a paper bag as a lure. No other fish would bite a hook with a, pa with a paper bag, like a brown paper bag. But these fish did. So he said that catfish will, will go for anything. So I guess they're pretty easy to catch. Maybe not the smartest fish. I don't know. But they taste good. They taste good. All right. Omron, thank you so much for being a channel member for six months. Again, it seems longer. It seems longer. Omron, thank you so much for being a channel member. And thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. Got a little something for you. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Lots of super chats today. Thank you so much. It means so much. I know things are not getting any cheaper around the world. And if you find some money to give me, to use for English lessons. Thank you so much. All of the money goes back to English lessons. All right, a couple more here. I think we have bait. We did, we talked about bait earlier in the lesson. I think this is a good lesson to rewatch because at the beginning I used so many of the terms that were connected like it's hard to know one without knowing the other. So let's see here. We have a couple more. 
The next thing I want to get into is how you have to fish in the United States legally. You can't just drop a line into the water. No, we have some rules here. And one thing you might need to go fishing is a license. So in the United States, if you want to drive a car, you need a driver's license. I have done an English lesson on driving. So you need a license to drive a car. You also need a license to fish. What makes a driver's license different from a fishing license is that when you get your driver's license, you can drive in every state. I have a driver's license from the state of Maine, but if I wanted to, I could drive in the state of New York or I could drive in the state of California. Not so with fishing. Each state requires its own fishing license. There is another typo. Oh boy. Let me fix that. If I'm an English teacher, I should not have typos. Got rid of the typo. Each state requires its own fishing license. And that means if I have a California fishing license, I can't fish in New York until I get a New York fishing license. Yep. Each state requires its own license. And each year you have to get a new license. I think they cost like 15 to $20 to get a fishing license. Game Warden is the next one. And so when you buy your fishing license, what that does is it helps save the fish. Because in the United States, we have something called Game Wardens. And they are like the police for the woods and the water. So if you are a hunter, you also have other rules to follow. If you're an angler or a fisherman or a fisherwoman, you have rules you have to follow. So game wardens are like the police for the woods and water. They make sure people follow the rules when fishing and hunting. Because if you don't follow the rules, and that leads to overfishing, which we will talk about in a minute. Game wardens try to prevent overfishing. In some states, there is a limit to the amount of fish you can catch in one day. And the reason that law is there is so that all the fish don't disappear. And if all the fish disappear, we might call that overfishing. If a lake or river is overfished, it might not have any more fish in it. So we try to conserve the fish. It means not to waste it, to save it. Fish are conserved in my state. Let's check the chat really quickly to make sure. Yeah, no kidding, Freddie. Catfish will eat hot dogs? I guess they will eat almost anything. There you go, Audie, perfect. Fish is the food, sorry, bait is the food for fish if you want to fish, like with a worm, exactly. Mega, thank you so much. A polite American. I try. Oh my goodness. Um, Mode, great one. Um, if you catfish somebody in English, it's just another way to say that you've tricked them. A lot of times catfishing happens online where one person will pretend to be another person and they are probably trying to get money from them. 
Yeah, so. Wallo has to go. Thanks for stopping by. You know what? This is um almost done. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, Brent. I once heard that lobster was the food of the poor, although it's a fancy food right now. Is that true? I don't know. I don't know. My state where I live in, Maine, is known for its lobster. And another fishing term we might use in English is bottom feeder. Bottom feeder. That is something that lives in a lake or an ocean and it gets its food from the bottom of the ocean. And down there is usually a lot of like trash. Some people have called lobsters the cockroaches of the sea because they will eat anything. So it doesn't surprise me that at one time lobsters were thought to be kind of gross because what they eat is gross. But now, of course, lobster is very expensive. So that might be true. Erjagon, is saying that correctly? Sorry if I'm not. I wonder if that is a Romanian name. All right, here we go. Freddy Wolf, super chat. My goodness, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Freddy, thank you very much for that super chat. I did send you and Danny and Anya a DM thanking you for my postcard. Very kind of you to think of me uh, because Freddie, Anya, and Danny met in France. Was it France or Germany? One of those two countries. France, I think. And they sent me a postcard. So thank you so much. Freddie, thank you. Thank you. This is fun. I like doing this. So it doesn't feel like work to me. Thank you. Lobster. Yeah. Maine is known for lobster. Yeah, maybe lobster. Maybe I should do an English lesson on creatures of the sea in English. I can talk about clams and quahogs, lobsters. I did do an English lesson at the beach where I talk about clams and quahogs, but all right, poacher, Constantine, that is English, American English. I don't know if it's British, but it's definitely used in the United States. So let's go back to overfishing and game wardens. Anytime you hear the word poacher in English, that is someone who either fishes or hunts illegally. So there are a lot of rules. I won't go over all of them in this lesson. But for instance, night fishing. If you fish at night or night hunting, it could be illegal. And if they are doing that, they are a poacher. Like hunting at night, always illegal. Fishing at night is not always illegal. And in fact, in my state, if you are an indigenous American or if you are a native American and you can prove that, sometimes you can night fish legally. Yeah, I have a friend of mine who uh, once a year is able to hunt at night, uh, not hunt, never hunt at night. You can never hunt at night in the United States because you use a gun so you don't know what you're shooting at at night. But um, he is able to fish legally at night. Yeah, so, but yeah, a poacher is someone who hunts or fish illegally. Yeah, Mahmood, when I say DM, it is a direct message or private message. Sometimes you'll hear PM. Thank you, Sita. They met in France. I was trying to think. I think the postcard they sent me had French writing on it. So, yeah, Isaac, what if a game warden catches you overfishing, 
doing something illegal, um, fishing over the limit. So depending on the type of fish, maybe you can only catch two fish a day. And if you are caught doing that, excuse me, you will probably have to pay a fine. You will have to pay money. If it's severe, if it's really bad, you may lose your fishing license. So, oh, there you go. All right, in astrology, Freddie is the sign of Pisces. I think my, is that March? I think, I think my wife, she's a Pisces. I think, I'm almost sure. Uh, my mood scorpions okay speaking of astrology i'm a scorpio just in case you wondered all right i think we have um are we done nope three more and they're all kind of related so let's talk about what happens when you catch a fish we're going to talk about something called scales when it comes to fishing so if you know what skin is, like all of this is my skin. I think I've done an English lesson on body parts before. But a fish's skin has something called scales. And they are not that good to eat. A fish has scales on its skin. You need to remove the scales before you eat the fish. And to do that, you must do something called descaling the fish. We call it descaling when you remove the scales of a fish. So in that picture, that fish is going to be a meal very soon. But before it is cooked, you definitely want to get rid of those scales. If not, you will have them in your mouth while you're eating. And that's not very fun for anybody. The last thing I would like to teach you, I think this comes from the French, and that is filet. So if you look at that type of fish, it is a filet of fish. Just one way in English, we say piece of fish. So a filet is usually very thin. And it looks like there are two filets on that plate. And maybe a slice of lemon. And maybe a sprig of parsley. Sprig. Well, that's the lesson hope you enjoyed the lesson. I hope you learned a little something. I think we did have over a hundred people watching at one time. Did not think that would happen. Maybe there are more fishermen than I knew in the world, more anglers, more fisherwomen. To be honest, you don't hear fisherwomen very often. Sagittarius. Know that. Yeah, my birthday is coming soon. I will be an old man, 48 years old. Yeah, Freddie, it was a pleasure for Danny, Anya, and myself to send you a little message on a postcard from Eastern France. Yeah, I'm happy I got it too. Thank you so much. Oh, do you, oh yes, Sita. Sita's been with the channel for a long time, so she is a friend of mine on Facebook. Yeah, thank you. She knows when my birthday is. I don't, I don't really like to celebrate my birthday much. It's just another year of getting older. Like I said, I don't want any presents. I don't need any presents. Yeah, but it, it's coming up in a couple weeks. Yummy. I can't eat anything related with seafood. I wonder if you are allergic. You know, some people are allergic to seafood. Some people are allergic to shellfish. I did do... A lesson on allergies a couple years ago if you would like to learn more about allergies thank you know that yeah to some people 48 isn't old 
And to some other people, 48 is very old or ancient. Colombia. Thank you, Diago. I will be in Colombia for a very short period of time in April. I'll be in Bogota. Just at the airport, though. Boomer. In English, old people, we call them boomers. And I am not quite a boomer. Boomers are like in their 70s now, boomers. But I sometimes joke on the channel that I am a boomer. Oh, Sita, her birthday's coming in a few days. I will see that on Facebook, I'm sure. All right. I think it's just about time. Get out of here. All right. Big thank you to, and let's go down through the list. Jeez, Audie, thank you so much. Filippo, Mahmoud, Words with MP. Eric, thank you so much. Filippo, Tanya, Amina, Rulina. Omron, thank you so much, Freddie. And one thing I forgot, I'm so sorry, but somebody also left a super chat. Let's see, so we can see this here. Dan left a super chat on um, one of my older videos. So Dan, if you're watching, thank you so much. It was the one on the difference between Republicans and Democrats in the United States. So Dan means so much for anyone to go out of their way to recognize me and throw a little money my way. Sometimes it's a lot of money and I thank you so much for that. All right, it's time we go. I have some things to do today. Some laundry, always fun. Can't mow the lawn because it's raining. But I would like to thank you all so much for joining. This is always a fun time. So fun that I don't even want to go. But I know if I just keep rambling here, it will be very boring. So I'm going to say goodbye. Oh, I don't want to say that, Audi. It's a funny question. I think I do know who, though. All I will say, well, it could be Audi. You might be actually Audi. You might be. But we'll have to ask. Uh, I'll just say that she is from Japan. That's it. That's all I'll say. But yeah, who is the oldest channel member? Who? I think I know who the youngest is. I think it might be Mahmoud. I think he might be the youngest. Not sure. All right. Thank you so much. Rambling now. Adios, amigos. I'll see you next week, I think. I'll have a new lesson for you next week. Adios.